Well, all right, guys. It's been a while since I've been on camera. I got cute for y'all today, so you know what it is. <laughs> what's going on welcome back to commission review we got a good one we've been trying to do this back and forth but you guys know how y'all been here for a minute y'all know my crew that this is a business y'all know how i am in this business we just we take our time and it happens when it happens okay we are not in control of everything but the queen is in the building we have the mole where my, where, hold on where my horn at i said the mole. <laughs> that's not her name but y'all know what i mean when i say that. <laughs> I you said change your name. Is that what you said? I was joking. I'm not serious. But oh, okay. I was like, Look. some of your fans probably would love that. Like on the real, like they think you are ever. I look at the chat. I was like, oh my god, they love her. Like when I wasn't gonna do it, it was like, oh my god. Da -da -da -da. I was like, gee, Aww. see, I even got the name up there animated. It was like da -da -da -da. Mission Impossible. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I'm so, so such a nerd. I'm so bad. I'm sorry. Hey, we support <laughs> nerds. Nerds run the world, not just. Bro, I'm telling you. I'm telling mm -hmm. you. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Anyway, so let's get down to business. First of all, let me say welcome to my platform. Welcome to my channel. Uh, shout out to you, Queen, for fooling all of us people who thought they were smart, like myself, because I had no clue. Really? Like, no. I mean, the thing about it, I don't know why I was like, she just. I, I I I go back and forth. I watched the recent with my friend. She watched it. She watched it for the first time, and she was like, she um didn't think it was you either. She said, I don't know. I just didn't think it was her. So that means she was really good. What we were saying. So I want to start by saying this: you um actually were into sports. You were into you know the volleyball. You were good at it. And I'm asking this question because my background is sports as well, and I feel like that when your background has something to do with sports. I feel like it gives you a leg up in competitions, no matter what it is. And I wanted to get your take on that. Do you think that your background kind of helped you getting, even though you had no idea about the show, just the sports background? A hundred and ten percent. So I think it's two things. And before I get into those two things, I'll go back and just describe my background. I started off playing volleyball when I was in middle school. And I'd been playing all the way through high school. I was competing on travel teams. And then I went to play at Division I College at Columbia University for four years. So if you imagine playing volleyball or one thing for 10 years, mm. and you understand this, Kamisha, since you played sports, but think about how many times you have to keep persevering and you have to work on one skill over and over again. Then you get it. Then you go on to the next one. You have to work on that over and over again. And that feeling of like just progressing and being patient and I would say the second thing is composure. Think about all the tight matches you've been in where it's like neck and neck or the time's almost running out. And you have to understand that to perform your best, you need to be composed. And you have to figure out what is it that's going to help you win, even when you're in mm. like high stress, high pressure environments. So those two parts definitely 110% have helped me in all aspects of my life and definitely helped me when I was being the mole. So you think you started in volleyball. Um, I want I didn't really I don't really people don't really talk about it as much. And I wanted to get a little background because I, I played um basketball and I ran track. So as soon as I started, I was like, oh my god, I didn't play volleyball, but I knew girls that was in it. Ooh, um so for you, how would you transition from being the because it's just not really a word for us as far as girls who was in sports, like a jock. I don't know, that's not really a name, not not to me. Um, from that to doing reality TV because it just, you know, it's just a big, it's a big jump to me. I feel like a lot of times we read out the TV, I hear a lot of women, they're doing different things in the background. I was, I was impressed to see that you was in the sports. You had such accolades. I was like, wow, I really want to hear more about that and how she had that transition. And just in terms of the sports of my entire background. Well, you can go to background, but I really want to get into the, to, uh, from being a sports girl to jumping mm -hmm. into reality TV, as far as a woman, like a lot of times it's, it's a typical um, model girl, different girls who get into reality TV. So to me, you know what I'm saying? You, a sports girl and to get into reality TV, I'm just wondering how did that even happen? That's a great question. First of all, me as a whole being, I would never have predicted could be on television. I just never saw that for myself in terms of being on reality TV because my natural personality is not dramatic. It doesn't, I don't like being in drama. I'm really chill. Mm, so okay. as entirety, I never expected that. But in terms of being a volleyball athlete and coming into reality TV, it translates. It's not common, but it 
definitely translates. When you're in a team with 15 other girls from different backgrounds, I'm a small country girl from Kentucky, humble family, going Love to it. playing with other girls from California across the world. Mm. Right. Every single day, the locker room, the gym, four hours a day on the <laughs> weekend too. And to maneuver that socially, it translates. Mm. That's rough. I remember growing up with that type of uh, schedule and, and the intensity of it. And I guess it does kind of prepare you, not just breaking it down like that as far as we have the TV. How did you even get started with this show? Um, how did you even get into it? Did you get chosen? Did you audition for it? You know, I've kind of been lucky in a good way. I think luck is a mixture of preparation as well and seizing mm. an opportunity. So I do believe that Beautiful. part of my journey, I had been preparing academically as far as the schools that I've gone to and just working on my character. So I think that had prepared me to accept this very, very random opportunity. And what happened was I had been working for Goldman Sachs for about three or four years at the time. And I had finally pulled the trigger around March of last year, February of last year, and said, okay, it's time for me to go. I want to go travel the world. I feel mm. very multifaceted. Yes, I'm a software developer. Yes, I like corporate, but I also want to be creative and experience with right. people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just made the decision to do that. And I'm not even kidding you, Kamisha. When I say sometimes the universe plays games, I really do believe that because the day after I quit my job, I was sitting in the living room in Kentucky wow. with my brother, and my high school friend from Kentucky, who I do love dearly, but I haven't spoken to in about two, three years. Thank God my number was the same and his number was the same. Mm -hmm. And he sent me the flyer for the mall. He said, I think you'd be amazing on this. Would you consider auditioning? And that was legitimately 24 hours after I sent my res resignation letter in. Oh, my God. So it, I do believe in that type of stuff. I do believe that mm -hmm. things do happen. And that sometimes it happens in, you know, threes or just the next day. Just that's beautiful. Like you had no idea your journey was going to go in that direction. You had no idea you're going to be even chosen for that. And someone else introduced it in your life. That's freaking amazing. And you ended up being the mole. Man, you don't even know how to world how I just it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So getting into it, um, and even though you signed up for it and everything else, how was it once you like were picked? Like, I guess tell me a little bit how you're chosen to be the mole, I guess. Um, I try not to read too much about because I wanted to hear from you. Um, like how did whether that you were chosen to be the mold? Did you ask for it or did you volunteer? Mm, also a great question. So they had asked me three times in total to be the mole. The first two times I said no. And I told them no because, like I said before, I am not a naturally dramatic, I'm not into drama in my personal life. That's not something that I like to generate nor maneuver and I remember the third time that they asked me and I was thinking to myself you know what something's up I think if this is the third time then they already have a vision for my role on the show and my mom and my dad are incredible incredible I'm obsessed with them so I have to talk about them and they have always told me my entire yeah. life you can do anything that hmm. anything is possible you just need the time you need the resources and it can happen. So I told them with the third time that they asked me, I said, look, I will do this job, but I definitely need the space to prepare because there is no guidebook on how to be the mole. Like, how do you do that? I have no idea. So I just need to prepare for the role because I want to do it well. And around two days before I was supposed to fly to Australia, one of the producers called me, said, hey, we need to chat. And I said, okay. okay. And he said, we're a officially making this decision for you to be the mole and we'll start preparing the two weeks of quarantine before we start filming. And in those two weeks that producer and I, we read John Le Carre. If you're familiar with him, he writes a lot of espionage novels. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. He popularized the term the mole. We, I watched John Le Carre's movies, Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, The Spy That Came In From The Cold, wow. thing about psychology and sociology and mm -hmm. about the art of acting because I'm not an actress, but there is an art to it. And mm. I was talking to friends about probability and statistics. Like, how do you think as a player when you're on the show? How do you test? What's the best way to test to keep you in the game? So it was an incredible journey. And it definitely is something we, I had to prepare for. 
Yeah, that's a that's really what's uh, gonna be my next question. The preparation for something like that because that's not like an everyday thing. Was like, okay, you know, you have a test tomorrow. Hey, read this A B C da da. Go yeah. research this. Use your resources. Like, you know, like you said, I'll be watching James Bond movie. But I mean, I literally, if I if that was me, I'd be like, let me get the you know the person who wrote the story by James Bond, whatever. I would be all into the background because I wouldn't know what to do and you were really good at it because like i said majority of people i read yesterday just some chat they were like saying i never guessed she was the mole i just randomly asked people um, who reflected in my comments it was like i didn't know she was the mole i never guessed it and i was surprised when she was revealed um why do you think that is why do i think people had a hard time guessing that i was the yes mole? yes you know kamisha in my natural life i'm not very molish i mm. When I talk to people, I really like connecting with them. I really like seeing how they're feeling. I'm the youngest of six, and my siblings are all very uh, loud, kind of bodacious, just very big characters. So I'm very accustomed to being in the background and kind of listening and maneuvering that way. And if you are playing, I think as a players too, I have applaud them. It's a, a tough, tough game. So I really, really applaud them and how well they played. And I know right. it was difficult because the moments you don't see, mm. the moments off screen is the moments where I'm braiding people's hair, where I'm braiding Greg's hair, I'm braiding Will's hair, I'm giving people hugs. And this is not me being the mold, this is just me being myself. So I think what makes it difficult to determine sometimes is that feeling the way someone makes you feel is really powerful. And because I don't have to be the mole off camera and I don't have to like always encompass this mindset that's like vindicious, it's more like fun, but I can still be my genuine self that you don't feel like this girl is malicious or the maybe the stereotypical terms you would associate with someone who's a mole. I see what you're saying. I see what mm -hmm. you're saying. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Um it, it, with with this show and you guys I've done um, a lot of commentary from reality shows. Y'all, this reality show to me was very unique, different the way I did things behind the scenes, especially with the quarantine. And you guys were closed off um, from family. And to me, from just hearing about it, it sounded like it was really hard on a lot of you guys, pretty much all of you guys, honestly. And it would be for anybody. So, and it's, each person had a person they could talk to because you kind of needed that, that human, hey, we good, I'm like going crazy, da, da, da. Who was that person for you? I've asked everybody this, just so you, by the way. Who who was your person on the show? Because y'all were kind of like away from everyone. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. There is multiple people, and I hope this starts to make sense. A lot of my emotions at eliminations are rooted in the people that I grew close to. So I would say the first person that I really, really felt like we got a great had great quality time moments with Samara. Samara and I before, after, I believe it was episode two for the prison and the warehouse mission. We were rooming together as we were filming that episode, which meant that Samara and I were talking every night, every day for about four days straight, just the two of us. And wow. I really connect with her because Samara's amazing. She's this beautiful she girl. Is. She's a model, she's funny, she's herself, but she's so intelligent and she really cares about her community. And I love that layer and that dichotomy of her in a way. So when the prison mission was over and I could feel like Samara was giving me the side eye because she was like, girl, how'd you not see the key? Or I could feel that maybe she was suspecting me. And I remember talking to her for a long time about like game. And that was a very kind of like me trying to encompass this player mindset. And I remember when she went home, I almost, I really, really got emotional with that elimination because mm. she was someone that made me feel like home. We were away from home and she was someone that made me feel that way, that I wasn't a million miles away from my family. And to lose that was the first time I felt the power of what it was to be the moon, but also how lonely this journey could be because it's not going to be the last time that someone that I like goes home. It's the first oh, time. Man. So I would say Samara. And then as the game went on, Will and I definitely, and you can tell like Will and I are like kids. And it's funny because I remember in the first episode, you, we were sitting around the fire and Will and I were talking and the first, after the first mission and it was just so natural and he felt so kindred, which is crazy because we have completely mm. opposite backgrounds. Right. But he worked for some reason, and he's definitely someone that I organic. 
and very organic, very, uh, very playful, very childlike. And I think that's what makes it really special. It's like the childlike friendship. And those are really cool. Like siblings or like, you know, the, the, the kids you knew around the back you play with. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. That's, that's the best type of uh, friendship, honestly. Oh, I love that type of friendship. Um, yeah, so I, the braiding of the hair, you brought that up. So <laughs> that was a big thing all over the internet. Like, who braided? Because I remember I saw, I was like, no no shade. I was like, somebody somebody braided that hair because it was just like too late. And I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> sitting, sitting out on the porch, grandmother, whoever braiding hair, that's like a, a you know. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> that looks too good, Okay. Because everyone was talking about how his hair was laid. People were writing comments, his hair is laid. I said, it is. Because I can't even braid hair. Look, people think it's weird. I don't like sweet potato pie, and I can't braid hair, and I'm from the South. I just can't do either one of them. I can't stand the taste of it, and I don't know how to braid hair. You and know what? You were born with it, though. You got to practice. So, you know, I'm not mad about it. I tried. It was a fail. So, I had kids. It was like, look, ponytails, and then when you get older, do your own hair. Because I just, it just wasn't my thing. <laughs> You know what, though? I am so the serious like, kids, though. If you didn't know how to do their hair, the ponytails can only last so long, Kamisha. Well, look, it, it lasted to a point where we were going to get it paid for to get done. It was like $200 <laughs> drop for you to get it braided and twisted and whatever you wanted. I was good with that. I was okay. a working mom, too. Working mom and then beginning stage of blogger. It was just, look, I had to do what I had to do. So, uh, yes, the braiding of the hair was a big topic for a while. Like, who braided the hair? And I was just like, Cause I don't know. I didn't think for some reason I didn't even connect it that you braided his hair. I really didn't braid anybody's hair. It wasn't until after the fact I was like, oh well, I never did. Cause it could have been anybody who braided their hair. So okay. how did it even came back? Was that passing of the time or just? You know, this cast was incredible. I hadn't. I did not grow up watching television, and I'm not very well versed in reality TV because I just don't watch television that much. Period. Mm -hmm. And this cast kind of knew that every time you're on camera, you need to be ready because this moment is forever. Mm -hmm. And they would reach out to me before them, we would start filming and they would say, okay, I have this idea. Do you think you could do it? And it wasn't just Will. It, I braided Will's hair. I did Avery's hair once. I did Greg's hair. I did Joy's hair. And that is so special to me. It's honestly one of my most proud, like a very prideful moment for me doing their hair because it is so rooted in where I'm from. And I'm from a small Kentucky town and in our community, braiding hair is a yes. big part of our culture. Like doing yeah. it on the, like you said, doing it on the porch, doing it outside yes. in someone's living room, calling them up, hey, can you do my hair today? Yes. It is so special. And that moment when you Very. really hear like everything, it looks good. It's like, it's a love language. And it I is. Was so happy it to is. do that for them. I was like, come on, let's do this. I wish they would explore that uh, more for us to see um, because it's a beautiful moment. From, from the cultures coming together, because like you said, it's a, it's a bonding experience. I mean, so I've seen hair getting done, pressed to braided, beans are on the stove, mm -hmm. we're watching a movie, maybe it's New Year's, whatever's happening, or i am got a picture tomorrow, girl, can you bring my hair really quick? Da, 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 da. Exactly. You know, I mean, I remember those it. days. Yes. Uh-huh. I love that. They should have brought that out. So you really need to, now I want to do a collage of each, if you can get each one of their hair braided, like I did that. That needs to happen. Ooh, that needs to happen. What? I think yeah. we can make that happen. You got, you got a, you got a special VIP line for requests at this point. So, would that be really cute? Like a collage of like, oh, I did this. Right, you know, I love, I love hair. I've been, I'm trying to get this hair special going for the longest of time, and I think Owen has one right now. But our hair and the stories behind it, and it's always like a braid. But there's so much stories behind braids. This is just a. I, mm. I love the whole thing that you just said. I love it. I love it. I love it. So you guys had like a bond that's really. Um, like I said, I always feel like y'all, it hits different the way y'all did things. That's, all reality shows have like the bonds, I get all that. But just because the fact you guys were so secluded, mm -hmm. I think that you guys bond was a little bit stronger than a lot of the shows because all you saw was each other. Would you agree or not agree That's, with that? You don't have your phone. You, you're going to the store and a manager is paying for your food. Like you're never by yourself. And that type of isolation when you're not with your family or friends, you can't call them, you can't talk to them, you can't write them letters, anything. You try to find solace in the people around you. And I think that's exactly what we did. And going back to the team aspect, I think about your track team and how you're seeing these same people all the time. And like maybe yes. you wouldn't be immediate friends with them, but because you are forced together and you have to evolve together, something special really comes out of that. 
And I yeah. think that's exactly what happened to us. A lot of special connections came out of it because we had to be together. Now, mm. so I want to go ahead and, and everything that happened is, I want to I wanna say that the past few months, I want to say that um, women of color have kind of changed the narrative. We'll start with Taylor. I'm not sure how, how much were you in the house? I'm sorry, in the house. I'm sorry, thinking about the show. If you were still <laughs> filming, still filming the mold when all that stuff you know happened, but when she won and the way she changed a lot of things for black media and just for just black women in general, and then you came out as the mole, it kind of happened back to back. And I remember talking about it with other um women of color and just people, period, other women, period. They was like, it's crazy how that happened back to back. And I always ask this, is there pressure with that for you, you know, to um, when you came out and saw, okay, she won and, oh, I'm the mole. They're looking at us now. Cause you, and I love it because now we're being seen. Look, I'm black media who weren't seen a couple of years ago, who's now being seen. Mm -hmm. So the changes are being made and they're being impacted by us, but still um, I'm not sure how you guys feel as far as your shoulders and the pressure of it all. Mm, that is a great question. So Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So watching Taylor has been incredible because yeah. I'm very, very new to reality TV. And right. I'm telling you as new as you can get because my mom did not let us have a TV when we were growing mm, up. So I'm just okay. not accustomed. And I remember when the mole came out, a lot of Twitter was putting us together, Joy Taylor and I, Joy Taylor, Samira and I, and talking about black women in on the television and the different type of characters that we represented. And as far as the pressure goes, I don't necessarily, and I don't know how Taylor feels about this, but I hope that she feels good because she's inspiring me. And I hope that she recognizes that even someone who's like going on a very similar journey as her, I'm also inspired and so honored to be on this journey in a very a similar time period as her. But for myself in this moment, thinking about my past, I think as a black woman, you have been going through things all your life, all your life. This is not the first rodeo. When you walk- I say in, it's a Tuesday. It's not the first rodeo. <laughs> you know, if you want, anytime you walk into the room, your presence is mm -hmm. a message. Your presence is a statement. Yes. The vision that you do is just a statement. So in this moment right now, I didn't, I don't feel pressure. I feel like I've been doing this. And I think what I would love to do is find a way that being my authentic self, my journey, my skill set, and how can I really give back to my community? I, if I would say that any pressure is coming, it's coming from that, but it's not coming from people looking at me. All I can do is exist because existing for a long time has been a message by itself. Wow. Wow. But do you do see that the narrative is changing? I've been doing reality TV as far as a blogger for years. And before that, I was a fan. I know you said that you, you know, you didn't watch it that much. I'm not going to understand that. Um, I get it 100%. But for me, um, as I got to a certain age, older, it came out when I was like, in, you know, close to my young early 20s, late 19. I was already of age watching these shows. That's when it came out. And there wasn't a lot of black women who were winning these mm -hmm. shows, competition shows or any kind of reality TV. Or they were shown in a really negative light. And so over the past few years, very few years from the cookout to Taylor to you, there's been some changes, not just on the screen with the black media. When she came out, she said she wanted to interview with black media. That changed the game. Um, you interviewing with me changes the game because you're on Netflix. A lot of things have changed. So I'm, you know, it's just really important to me that the messages I, I, I put out there that, you know, you did make a difference. Um, it, it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened in a long time. You watch a whole entire reality TV show for every series for 10 years or something like that. And then you might have one black woman that wins. And that's just a history, mm -hmm. honestly. So yeah, I, I know you haven't watched, but I'm just giving you a quick history. It's just, it, it's impacted a lot, a lot. And I'm not sure if anyone hasn't told you that, but it's been a good impact. Thank you. It's It's an honor. You know what? Because I truly feel as if it's not just my story, it's our story. Mm -hmm. And it's an honor to be a part of our story and represent it in that way. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. But I I mean, I wanted to know if you felt like, I don't, maybe I shouldn't use the word pressure, that you, even though you didn't watch the reality TV, people are telling you that this is a first. 
or this is like something they hadn't seen before. Or for the girls coming up, the black and little girls coming up, this is normal for them, which is awesome. But for the pre like me or whatever before me, it's not. It's very new. Mm-hmm. So I want to make you aware of that and want to know how you felt about that. As far as being a different character on screen or not commonly represented on screen. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. I came up from favorite flavor of love. No shade to the show. I watched the entire. I watched the show. It was not much on we could watch like that, but compared to those um, images, and I'm not trying to judge anybody. Please don't take it away from anybody. Come out comments. It is what it is. But representing black women, we're so many different things. Let me just say that. And I guess I can kind of say it that way. There's more than just us doing the heels, and I'm trying to get my man. There's so many other than things, and I feel like that we're being shown that light. If that, if I could say it that way, I don't want to get offended or say, because your journey is your journey, and regardless of how it starts, I'm not trying to shade anybody, but I'm loving it because I didn't identify with that, but I identified with the tether, identified with Cassie. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just, you know, and a lot of other women feel the same way as me, so I wanted to know how you feel about that. I just gave you a lot. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wouldn't, I, I appreciate that. It really, really is. And I would say that the correct word is not pressure. I think the correct word is inspiration and motivation to make sure that my work speaks for itself, mm. that the work that I do from this really, really gives back and creates a cycle to the women that are being inspired and the people who are seeing this different or diverse type of black woman or this different side of black women, because we're so multifaceted that I complete that loop, you know, that feedback loop of doing work that connects to that. I think that's what I feel more so than pressure because, and I do recognize it. And I, if I think back in my life and if I think about the women that have really inspired me, I will give you one example. My father is a civil rights legacy. Well, he's a civil oh, rights wow. veteran and I'm a civil rights legacy. Okay. So that's the kind of household I grew up. And I grew mm. up watching really strong women Yes, yes. my aunts really my mother really strong woman and there's this photo of Gloria Richardson I don't know if if she's not a super very very common but she was very much a civil rights activist at the time when it wasn't cool to be an activist that's when she was doing it that's the important time okay (laughs) when when you could die for being an activist yes yes he is pushing this gun out of the way, she has on these high waisted jeans, a white t shirt. Wait, she... say the name again. Now you know Gloria, you know Gloria, just regular, I'm not saying regular, but Gloria Richardson. Continue, continue talking. I'm going to find it. Okay. Find this picture this picture's incredible. And it really, really obviously has stuck with me because that's what I grew up seeing. And so what I feel now is am I carrying that? Am I moving that mission forward of so many black women in our history from slavery, from the civil rights movement, and I doing something that would make them proud. And so I think that all my life, I really do believe that work speaks louder than words. I've been preparing to carrying that and trying to make my actions line up to carry that pressure that feels now in this moment, I'm just so grateful and so glad. And I want to just complete the cycle, if that makes sense. Is this the picture? How can I see this? Wait, am I not yes! The yes, yes, yes. Like, look, like, look at her face. Look at who she is. And she's, she's on a mission. She has a bigger goal than just that one moment. And that's wow. wow. That's and so your family, she's a part of your family, is what you were saying, as far as you knew not knew her of, of, of her. Your family spoke about her, the things she did. Because you grew up in a type of household anyway. So you you just that was an everyday thing for you. This that's a beautiful story. You really I'm amazed. I love history. I love black history. Um, mm-hmm. I don't talk about them, but I love history. Um, I didn't do well in math, but I was uh, really great in history, especially black history. I was one of the kids that spoke up because of the fact um, black history was not spoken enough in my class. And I, you know, I was a military kid, so most of the class, it wasn't a whole lot of diversity. So stuff like this, like this is a very, very powerful picture. And that is not no regular gun. Like mm-hmm. she's literally, wow, this is amazing. I'm, man. 
So you have like a side in your life that you really should, this should be explored a lot more. Like I'm probably going to hit you up around black history. I'm, I might have to do a session <laughs> with you. Like I'm being very serious. I do stuff like that, like black history month. Cause I, I, you know, I wear the black, I do the thing for January. So we might have to link up because you probably have a lot of stories that um, I would love to hear and you should do on your own. That's beautiful. I would love that. Oh, wow. no, it's open, wide open. That is amazing. So you have this great background that really should be explored. Like I said, I love black history. That's just like my respect to you even more. Um, so as far as you being the mole and people find out about it, and I know how the audience reacted, and then even the, the you know people on the show, because nobody knew about it. How did your friends and family react? Because you couldn't tell anybody, I'm assuming, like at all. How was that like? <laughs> 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 Misha, I've been keeping this secret for so long. You oh have my God. no idea. From the day I landed in Australia until October 21st, I truly was not a free woman and I could not speak freely about this. So it's been a long time, a very long time. Wow. And I remember when I arrived from Australia, one of the producers had said, I'm sure your family's going to know. Yeah, I'm sure you have to tell them. I was like, I don't. I really want them to find out on their own and see how that goes. And I would say the funniest person has been my brother. I'm the youngest of six. So there's a lot of us, four brothers, two girls. I'm the baby right. girl. You're the baby. The second oldest is my brother Camaro. And he's my ace boom coom. I love them all. And we all mm -hmm. have special relationships. He's a really, really a special one too. And we're both in New York right now. And we watch the premiere together. And he okay. has no idea. I'll keep you in mind. And this entire time, it's actually really funny. And I shouldn't laugh. Let me not laugh so I can tell the story. But all the time leading up to it, I, he was asking me questions. He was thinking about, oh, how much does the moon get paid? And so I would say, you know what? I really, I don't know. I heard that maybe the contract is different from that for them and that right. perhaps it's a, a set salary, but I'm really not sure. It was just kind of hearsay, you know? And so I'm not trying to be obvious, but kind of subtle and just... Mm -hmm. And so he, I'm doing this for like weeks, years, and we're watching the show. We watched the first five episodes at 3 a.m. in the morning, Easter time. I wake him up. He has to go to work at 8, and he's down. He's ready. We got the pizza going, the wine going. We're watching it. He's laughing. We get to the end. I say, Camaro, so who do you think the mole is? He was like, man, I don't know. I said, Camaro, do you think I could be the mole? He said, you know what? I don't think people know you like I do. Nobody knows that you used to be uncoordinated. Nobody knows that sometimes you can just make really random decisions that no one else understands. He said, you know what? I think you're just unlucky. You're really trying your best, but you're just really unlucky. And I cannot explain oh, wow. how much I wanted to like just laugh and fall on the floor. But I had to hold it in because I, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to yes. see his reaction at the end. Right, and right, right. When I got back from the finale, because we had celebrated in Vegas, I said, okay, so mm. now do you know that it's not just unlucky, that there's strategy behind this? And he's just dying laughing. He's like, you know what? I really, really, really was surprised. So it's been fun. It's been a really fun journey. I'm going to say something. Me watching the whole train scene, I was so frustrated. I have to admit this right now because you're right here. The, I was like, oh, my God. She couldn't have grabbed that. <laughs> That's the one scene. I was so fucked. I was like, are you telling me? I said, Greg, why do you? I was like, oh, my God. And I said, you know what? That was like the only time the I think the entire series that I thought it could have been you. That Because I thought she could have got that. I, mm -mm. I could have got that. My old behind. I said, no. I said, something's not right. But other than that, you played it off. <laughs> you played it off very well. <laughs> it's going to know confession. I really did try. It's not as crazy as it oh, sounds. you did? Really, really to try to catch this bag. And then just, I was shocked when it fell to the ground. I remember, like, when you see me squat down, that is a true shocked face that the bag fell to the ground. And then I was actually sad because after, you don't realize this, but after you mess up or you sabotage the mission, you got to explain to all mm -hmm. these people why right. it wasn't possible. And if you remember that, I had just came from the gold mission. Yep. And it was bad. It was so bad. And I had been on the chopping block by like every player I was talking like, about. That's why, that's why I said that was the that was the one moment where I was questioning. Wait a minute, what my thing? My, okay, we're, we're back. I'm sorry. The okay, scene good. where everybody got left on the cold on the cold floor. That scene to me, 
I would did the same exact thing. I would have left everybody sitting there. I would have got me some beer and something to eat, and I would have went to sleep. I swear to God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I said this a hundred times. I would have left everyone there, and I probably would have said, I probably would have said something. It depends. I don't know. I might have been just cold blooded and just said I'm out. But I'd be like, I'm sorry. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Do you get asked? That a lot about that because that was like a G moment. You walked out like, girl, it's nothing. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I think if I was in the mall, I probably would have been slightly more relaxed and a little bit more playful because I'm a very playful person. I probably would have just been like, relax, y'all. Y'all know y'all would have done it too. I'll see you back the next day. Like it's not that serious, right? But that that was kind of my feeling. I obviously I couldn't do that at the moment. Maybe I could have, but my role is a little different. But in my mind or something, I'm like, get, I'm like, come on now. The second person, you see the confessional. I was even thinking that Casey might not have taken it. But when I saw her confessional and she said that I want that exemption, I was like, I was shocked when I watched it. I was like, I was too. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, you were the only one I thought wouldn't. I was like, Jacob, Will, Avery, Greg, Joy. Oh, God. Last I was taking that, and I was like, maybe Casey wouldn't have. And when she said that, I was I like, I would have yeah. never paid her. I was like, when I first saw, I was like, wait a minute, okay, Casey. Mm -mm. I was like, all right. Well, I said, you know, it, she was real about it. But like I said, for me, when I watched it, I said I did the same exact thing. I probably would have said something like, "Y'all yeah, be alright," but I'm going to get a <laughs> beer and go sit down. I see y'all at the crib. Bye. Exactly. Even and I would have said night. it, and I probably would. Huh? It's just, it's just one night would on you... the floor. It's not, they had mats. It's okay. But oh, they, well, I heard it was they said it was cold. But when they when they when they came back and you were just sitting there chilling, I was like, I'm so done with her because she's sitting there drinking. <laughs> they were like, uh, <laughs> and like, it killed me. It killed me when he was like, "How are you doing? How do you think we're doing?" Well, I don't know. I asked. I was like, I'm so... <laughs> uh, I played that part. Three times. <laughs> I would have said some mess. So oh my God, I'm about to lose my lashes. That was <laughs> I was so done. I was so because I'm a really playful and I got a smart, I got a smart mouth, and I'm just really, you know, crazy. I don't know what I would have said. Like <laughs> I didn't have to ask you. I could have just said nothing, drank my tea, and not said good morning or anything. <laughs> I was being nice. <laughs> that is hilarious. No, it's true. I think looking back, oh, okay. think about all the ways, and in the moment, it feels so serious. But even as I'm looking back, I'll probably be like, okay, relax. I'm going to give y'all time. We're going to get through this. Let's keep it moving. It's okay. Like, because it's, I agree, like being playful, it's just being honest. Like, everyone knows it wasn't about let's get yeah. the money. It was about who's going to get it first. But everybody, I know there was, well, I mean, if I was on the other end of it, I would have came in there hot. Like, you know, like, man, it's I'm uncomfortable. Like, pour me some of your tea. Don't drink anymore. I want to drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree, though. You know, my best friends would have been like that. Like, you know, that's oh, really? a reach with your best friends where you understand it, that you can respect it, but you don't have to be happy about it. So got you, that's got like you, got you. Oh my God, this has been such a fun, fun interview. I got a few people who are waiting on Twitter spaces who want to talk to you. So we are going to journey over that way. Um, she is super fun. She's super chill. Like you can tell she's like real serious in business or whatever. But it's like, what's that? Um, that that weird Eddie hairstyle with the business in the front and the <laughs> front in the back. She's mm -hmm. super fun. She's super genuine. She's super cool. I'm, I'm, I told you I'm a little square. I'm a little nerd. It's okay. It's okay. So I want to say shout out to Casey for stopping by. I This was worth it. We've tried to do this for like, I feel like a, a year. It probably ain't been a year. It's probably been like a month. But still, I'm extremely happy. I'm in this business. I know how it goes. You build relationships. To me, the relationship that I built with her, to me, was worth it. Because I got to take some time to build a relationship with her in between getting the schedule. So it was worth the wait, worth all of it. So I'm really happy I got to get to know you and um, bring you on my channel. So thank you, Mama, for coming by. And it was everything. I laughed. Like I guess my lashes barely hanging on right now. I'm not even lying about that. Um, I laughed the entire time. That's how I know I had a good interview. I want people to feel like they when they're in my interview that there's dominoes on the table. My mama's in there making some gumbo or catfish and we're drinking something. You have maybe some tea with some <laughs> other stuff in it. You know, that's how I want you to feel when you're here. I'm a Louisiana, Texas girl. So that's how we rock. I got my red cup. 
that's how I make everyone who comes to my channel feel chill, where you could just talk and have a good time. So I hope you did that. Absolutely. Just add crawfish in there. I'll be all right. Oh, look, yeah, for sure. Well, with the season right now, it's kind of tripping with the seafood, so that's why I didn't say it. It's a short, <laughs> short subject for us right now. <laughs> People are not happy. <laughs> that's when you know you're Louisiana for real. All righty, yes, thank mom. you. So this has been a pleasure, and the, now the feeling is too mutual. Too mutual. Yes, ma'am. Okay. As a Southern girl, I'm going to close the door. I will see you guys on Twitter.